Good morning, good morning, good morning. What's up, everybody? It's a TGIF edition of The Faith Room. Come on in and let's get this day started. Hold on, let me see my camera. Thought I did this prior to coming on. All right, let's see, let's see, get it together. There we are. Good morning, good morning. Yes, I'm using this as my mirror. It's a Friday morning. It's a um, faithful, forgiving, free from sin kind of Friday, honey. Listen, it's a rainy day in Little Rock. Y'all come on in. Good morning, Miss Diary Turner. Good morning, Lady Rose. Good morning, Jermaine. Good morning, Pearly. So listen, y'all know the order of the room. What do we do first? We come in and we speak. We declare our day and then we start tagging and sharing. That's right. All right, JJ is already declaring that it is a fabulous Friday. Absolutely, I stand in agreement. Good morning, Elizabeth Nichols. Carolita, good morning. Good morning, Yolanda King. Good morning, Dewey. Good morning, um, Renee Austin. Carolyn Donerson, good morning. Probably that's it. He did it again. He did it again. Alicia Bingham, what's up? Good morning, Ms. Dahl Ray. She says it's a fabulous Friday. A absolutely. Lenora Busby, good morning. Fabulous Friday. Y'all come on in and let's get this day started. And I am rocking solo today. Um, was on the phone with the boss getting uh, some final instructions. He thought he was going to be able to jump on today. However, um, he is here in, in our city, uh, but the, you know, the churches that he, he's here for, they have already uh, already had some things planned for this morning um, for him. And so he won't be able to be on. He said he was going to try to watch, but I don't know if that is uh, the case or not. However, we got to roll on. Is that all right? So you got me, your girl, Cherie, and uh, we're going to continue the conversation that we started uh, on Monday or Tuesday. It's been a very intriguing conversation, very engaging. Good morning, Stephanie. A fantastic Friday. Absolutely. Fantastic Friday. There's another one. Good morning, Marcella. Good morning, LaShawn. All right. Matthew, what's up? Juanita Edwards, good morning. Good morning. Faithfuls, I like it. Good morning, Queen. Blessings and favor to you as well. All right, Michelle, let's go. Let's go. Let's do this. Thank you, Stephanie. It's a walk by faith Friday, says Sheila Gray. All right, listen, okay. I see Pearlie understands the assignment. I was just going to ask, are y'all tagging people? But I see it. I see it. I see it. Good morning, Kamal. He's tagging. Good morning, Mr. Dor Minister Doris Anthony. Big brother Tony, what's up? Good morning, Valerie Bridges. Y'all come on in the room. Uh, let me do my part. Hold on. Let me, let me set some things up first. Let me go on and get this music queued up so that when it is time, we, we can rock and roll, but y'all keep doing what you're doing. And then I'm going to, to, uh, share this to my page as well. And listen, we already know the tag is very powerful. That is and Pastor Nate and I say it all the time. That's how this platform grew because you were relentless in your tagging uh, and your sharing. And so let me do my part. Uh, I don't really tag a lot, but I share because I have a whole lot of traffic on my page. And so uh, let me do that. Make it public. Share. All right, there we go. Just like that. All right. I got it. I, I, I had to make sure I had all the things because yesterday my eye was just running. I didn't have really nothing to uh, handle up on that. I got my coffee. I need to go and drink it now or try at least because, you know, when it's time to rock and roll, I ain't going to be able to take a, no sips, I don't think, because I'm doing several things at one time. Good morning. I see y'all coming in. Good morning, Kadri. Good morning, Gwen Rose Kelly. Jazzy, what's up? Miss Ruby, Gracie Arnold Davis, Mother Dorothy Lover Lewis, good morning. Kadrick says it's a Freedom Friday. Good morning, Miss Jessie. 
Minister Dennis, good morning, good morning. Hey, if we have any first timers in the room, would y'all do me a favor, type the number one, uh, type the number one and then tell us where you're watching from and uh, watch how we love on you. We love to meet new family members, right? We don't call you, this is what my dad used to say in his church when he passed it. You're not, we don't call you visitors. You're just a, a long lost family member. And so that's what we, that's how we feel here. You're a family member uh, here in the faith room. And, and once you come in, we're just certain you're going to come back again. All right. This is, this wearing me right here. This right here. Getting on my nerve. This right here. No oh, idea today. With my scissors. I ain't got no scissors in there. I can't leave. So guess what? We're going to have to rock and roll with it. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Good morning, Terry Linton, Deborah Colbert Johnson, Christy Lynn Wright. Bishop Cousins is in the room. Good morning, sir. Leslie Chandler is going to be a great day. Absolutely. Tim Jennings, good morning. I see y'all tagging away. Any first timers in the room? Let's see, let's see. Good morning, Joel Bunn. Rochelle says it's TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. What y'all got coming up for the weekend? Because it's the weekend, baby. What y'all got? What y'all doing? Having fun? Resting? What, what's up? I want to know. I'm nosy. Tell me, what are you doing this weekend? Kim Pastor, it's a great, fruitful Friday. I know that's right. A faithful, friendly Friday, Miss Jesse said. So what y'all doing this weekend? Resting. I know that's right, Julie. Resting. Very intentional. I made a post this morning. Bishop Cousins working, of course. That's, that, that's a part of the life of an entrepreneur. Sometimes you don't get to take off. You know what I'm saying? Uh, working. Getting my hair braided, cleaning the cleaning my carpet, barbecuing. Come on. Are you having a get together, Marcella? I'll be resting this weekend and I might hang out with my two granddaughters. Going to a wedding. All right. High school graduation party. Working. Sleep, sleep, church, and more sleep. I know that's right, Matthew. Celebrating my niece's birthday. Okay. So Marcella is having a get together. We just going we gonna to overstep our boundaries and show up at your house. <laughs> uh, Christy is turning up for my birthday this weekend. Happy birthday, Christy. Resting intentionally. Spending time with my beautiful wife, Patricia, and her birthday is tomorrow. Happy birthday to my big sister, Pat Gant, Patricia Gant. Y'all tell her happy birthday. Happy birthday to Christy, whose birthday was on the 6th. All right. Uh, it's a date night. Okay, Miss Jesse. But Pastor Leverett and I, the focus will be on us after his week of work. That's what's up. Be intentional about what you want to flourish in your life. Y'all see that? An intentional date night. All right. Uh, let's see. It's going so fast. Good morning, Lady Fairchild. Um, so... Let me see. Let me see. A uh, face your fears Friday for God is forever with you. All right. And Robertson meeting my sisters for lunch tomorrow. I'm supposed to be getting, getting up with my sisters and y'all know I don't have any biological sisters. So I have little, I have different sister groups. So meeting up with one of my sister groups tomorrow evening, I think tomorrow afternoon or evening, I should probably find out what time. Huh? Um, yeah, we're just going to hang out because there's so much has been happening. Y'all know it's just good to um, breathe. It's good to breathe. And it's good to have people in your life that you can just go and exhale with. Uh, and in one of my sister groups, it's just like death after death in their families. One lost a sister. One lost a stepmom. Right after that, uh, a 16-year-old um, cousin was... was uh, killed then another cousin was killed right before his graduation then 
another one of her this is the same same friend then her cousin um lost her life to what is, what is it called a uh, um murder suicide situation and so she's just not been able to catch a breath then again i said i had another one in that same group her sister passed away then another one who uh cassandra white she's in her her stepsister passed so y'all it's just a lot going on and in aside aside from praying or in addition to praying for one another it's just good to be a safe space in a place where your friends can find respite and and just be able to breathe and you know i want to be the one to try to 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 put a smile on their face or, or just be a sounding board or a listening ear. All right. So that's what I'll be doing tomorrow. If the Lord says the same, um, I don't think I'm supposed to be nowhere tomorrow in the daytime. Lord, I don't, what's tomorrow. I don't know. My, my assistants will let me know. I don't think I have any meetings. So hopefully I'll be able to rest uh, a little bit, but I got things to do around this house. Y'all know what I mean? Straightening up this house. Getting things in, in divine order. Because um, how many know when you run and run and run and sometimes things just go awry. You ain't got time to just clean up like you need to. And sometimes my house gets in that shape. And so I need to spend time tomorrow getting things in uh, back in order. Cause you know what? When your house is in order, you just you think better, you feel better, you're able to move better. So, yeah, that's why you. Um, um, I should say Yolanda, Cassandra Seacrest says everybody needs a respite group, safe space to just be you. Absolutely. Uh, sending condolences and prayers to the family of those gone on. May God grant you peace, which which surpasses all understanding. All right. Elizabeth is spending time with her grandson. Y'all get it, get that time in with your family. Family is everything. Um, yeah. I have to go to work tomorrow and go to a birthday dinner. I need to get my house in order too. Yeah, we got to push Paul sometimes. Get this house together. Um, so I didn't see any first timers. Yeah, you feel better when your house is in order. Yeah. I want to reach out. Listen, those of you who, who mentioned getting rest, let me read to you something that I posted. Um, as a because I'm I'm so serious about this this rest thing. It's not a joke. It's not a joke for me anymore. You know, since the last little bout I had, um, and so I made a post that says a reminder, and it's from this this movement that I follow called the Nap Ministry. Um, it's a real thing. And she says, reminder, we are not resting to recharge so we can go and do more. Did you hear that? We're not resting to recharge so we can go and do more. We are simply just resting. We are resting because it's our divine and human right. It's not connected to more output. I need y'all to get this. You just rest because you need rest because that's your right to rest. I'm not resting up so I can do more. Now, many times it 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 uh, results in that when I'm resting, I'm able to do more, but I'm not resting so I can do more. I'm resting because that's my right. You know, I, yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's my right. Rest is not a luxury. It's what I need. It's a necessity. And I want us to get that in our minds. And uh, Pastor Paul Little brought out a very, very uh, profound statement. You know, we're talking about we got this grind culture and that's what's ingrained in most of us on here. This grind culture. But when you look at the word grind and what does grinding do? Grinding is wearing away at something till it's down to nothing. And that's how most of us operate. We're always grinding, grinding, grinding until we get to the point where there is no more. We have nothing else to give. And then we die. <laughs> you see that? That's not, that's not, that's not the will of God. Right? So yeah, I just I just want us to be more intentional about getting rest. Rest resistance. That's it. I got the book. 
She so yeah, she is the one that has the nap ministry. Um so y'all, that's a good book to read. I wish I had it over here with me. Rest is resistance. It's an absolutely great book. I, I was introduced to it to that book by one of my professors, and I have continued to read it even after school. It's it's very, very good. Um it the reason it's called rest is resistance is because this we're in a capitalistic um society and we are we are wired to go get it go get it make the money make the money do this do that and so rest seems to is in resistance to that culture y'all need to read it thank you for sharing that um richard miller if i were teaching on this i would title it even god rested come on now and did it god and his son jesus Come on. Good morning. Look who's in the room. Pastor D, what's up? We ain't seen you in a long time, bro. Damon Allen. Thank you, Lady Fairchild. That's all. I just want to help somebody. I was helped, so I listen. I want to share. Stephanie says, I finally got my husband to take some time off to rest. Quit picking up all these phrases that the world quotes and, co and comes up with. True that. Uh, Got to get that book. Absolutely. I love it. A right to rest and not to do more. It is essential. Yeah. It's a learning Friday. All right, y'all. Are y'all ready to jam for the lamb? Hold on. Let me see what Miss Hortensia says. Absolutely. Rest is so important for us all. Tomorrow is my youngest son's 25th birthday. We will celebrate him and the rest of and rest the day as a whole. All right. Let's get it. Get that rest. It was a pleasure to meet and greet Pastor DA a few weeks back at Greater Life. So y'all saw him, Greater Life. We ain't seen him in the room, but I know he's been busy working on that uh, doctorate. We're not mad at you, bro. Get what you need. Get what you need. So listen, are y'all ready for the question of the day? Are you ready? I don't. Okay, let me get myself together. Can I can I get another swig of coffee? No, you know what? Let me let, let me get y'all going and then I'm gonna drink coffee. <laughs> Here we go. Yo, faith from what's my belay? and easy it's a yes or no answer do you think pineapples belong on pizza do pineapples belong on pizza i had a debate with somebody the other day i don't want it they wanted it we were ordering for a team meeting do pineapples belong on pizza Yes, not for me. No, yes, yes, absolutely. No, no, yes, no, ma'am. No, ooh, no, 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 and no, no, heck no, 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 yes, 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 no, nope, yes, yes, it's good. A yes for me. Yes, love it with pepperoni. No, 
Yes. Uh, no, I'm not a fan. No. Uh, yes, not for me. No. When I eat, used to eat pork, yes, but now it's a no. Ashley and our youngest like it, but I don't. That's Pastor D.A. No, no, no. Yes, absolutely. Affirmative. Yes, with pepperoni, sausage, and extra cheese. Never. No. Yes. Yes. No, no, no. Yuck. Nope. It's the sweet and salty. Yes. Nope. Uh, nope. Yes, ma'am. No. No. Ah. I don't know. Is this 50 50? Yes. Not at all. Or is it more no's? Run me my piece, my piece of whipped pineapple. Now, Matthew, Matthew, tell me that's just nasty. But it's a, it's a hit. But I'm more of a savory person. Um, this is a real good debate, Chris said. More yeses. It's it's more no's. Okay, which split down the middle. I love how you're catching the yes and nod. Am I wait, wait, wait. Am I saying yes and doing it? What am I doing? I don't know, child. Um, yes, with Canadian bacon. It's a vegan pizza for me. Uh, the, you vegans always got to come in here and say something. Every I got a I got a sister like that. We can't go. We got to figure out where we can go because she's vegan. Or we got to figure out where we can go because I can't have peanut oil. I can't have this. I can't. I can't eat this cheese. I can't. You know what? Bring your lunch. Bring it. Put it in your purse and set it up on the table. I like y'all though, but anyway, more no's they said. Yes wins. So we can't even agree on who winning. No. It's a Hawaii. I don't care what it's called. Is it supposed to be on there? Yes and no. Whatever you prefer. Playwright, Minister Dennis. John said it's almost like ketchup and greens. Never, ever. Y'all, I tasted that foolishness. That ketchup and greens. I think Nate, he got me. Even though it might be a thing, Nate, I don't believe Nate eating no ketchup and greens. Because if I recollect that day, I don't remember him putting no ketchup on his greens. Those of you who were at the table with us, if you're in here, did he even do that? He got me. Always making food out of me. Some kind of way. Yeah, ketchup and greens ring. He said that was a Macon, Georgia thing. But then all these people from Macon was like, he must be talking about Macon, Alabama, or Macon, Texas or something, because we ain't doing that in, in here, down here. But then there were two, two people, two people that said it is a thing. One said it is a thing. I do eat ketchup and greens. I mean, ketchup and hot sauce on my greens. Then there was another lady who was from Atlanta. One was from, from Savannah. One was from Atlanta. The lady from Atlanta said, it is a thing, but I don't eat that. So, yeah. He got me. But it's okay. Don't, that, right, don't insult greens with ketchup. It, but y'all, it don't even taste like nothing. It tastes like greens and ketchup. Nothing was enhancing nothing. So, yeah. But let me tell you, that I kept my word. I did what I said I was going to do. I told him I was going to try it. All right. Let's see. Let's get rocking and rolling. It's the top of the hour. It's a rainy day in Little Rock, you guys. And uh, so please bear with me. Uh, my eyes want to run and nose running. All these things. But we're going to get it done. All right. Hold tight. Hold tight. All right, let me put my glasses on so I can see. And here we go. So as you know, let's take that down. We have been talking this week about overstepping boundaries. Um, I'm sure I had, here it is. Overstepping your boundaries when it's gone too doggone far. Sometimes we run out. 
overstepping your boundaries when it's gone too far. And so we've had some great conversation around that this week. Um, and let me give a shout out to the pastor comments. I know he's in the room. Uh, he did a phenomenal job. That lesson yesterday uh, was such a blessing. Um, just reminding us that even God set boundaries. And so if God created and set boundaries, how much more should we, his children, we, and we, we always sing, and I want to be like Jesus to be like Jesus. I want, I want to be like the Lord. And well, in, in this wise, you need to do what he did. This is one of those things. And I think because it doesn't sound super spiritual to us, we don't think that it's something that we need to embrace. However, comma, you do. All right. Everybody needs boundaries of some kind in your life. Otherwise, you're just going to be living life just willy nilly. Whatever happens, what is it? Case or sera, whatever will be, will be. That's not the will of God for your life. Okay. All right. So let's talk today again. If we want to, uh, I want to do a quick, quick um, recap for the sake of time. Um, somebody remember what a, what is a boundary? What is a boundary? Somebody type it in the chat. What's a boundary in your own words? What is a boundary? What is a boundary? Let's see. And they're still talking about Pastor. Yeah, he did a great job yesterday. Awesome word. It was the birds that had boundaries for me and, and get off some people's lawns and trespass and all of that. Great analogies and everything. Okay. Uh, boundary. A line of respect that you do not cross. A boundary is setting limitations. Um, and so both of those are, those are good. Uh, the order you have set for your life, because now he did remind us yesterday, boundaries symbolize or bring order. So much like how in creation, how God set boundaries for, for, you know, the waters could only go so far and the sky could only go so high and this could only do it's a limits. Boundaries create order because if there were no boundaries, even in creation, the waters would be everywhere. The sky would be all over the place. Do you see what I'm saying? So it creates order. Uh, Kiana says it's a limit you set. Um, uh, when you set repeat rules for yourself, all right? Saying no and not feeling bad about it, all right? So listen, here, here's our definition uh, of, for a boundary. A boundary is a line that marks the limits of an area. It is a dividing line. All right. Titus 3 and 10 was one of our base scriptures. As for a person who stirs up division after warning him once and then twice have nothing more to do with him. All right. So this was in context of, of uh, um, in the church of God, but even in your life, if there are people who seem to always disrespect your boundaries and they keep causing division um and upheaval then you have you have been given permission to move on have nothing more to do with them okay another scripture we've been basing this on is first peter 4 15 but let none of you suffer as a murderer a thief or an evildoer or as a busybody in other people's matters so in this context he's talking about suffering for the cause of christ that brings God glory. But when you're suffering because of something you did, such as murdering, such as stealing, such as doing evil, or such as being a busybody in other people's matters, he said that doesn't bring him glory. And so that, that last part, that's what we're talking about. When we talk about overstepping boundaries, you're being a busybody, stepping over into other people's affairs. All right. Now, Let's talk about um, what does overstepping boundaries mean? What does that even mean? Hold on, let me let me pull this back up. What does overstepping boundaries even mean? It means doing something that goes beyond the lines. Remember, boundaries are lines. Doing something that goes beyond the lines of what you allow. When somebody oversteps the line, they have overstepped the boundary. 
All right. It could be invading your personal space or getting you to do something you don't even want to do. Overstepping. And remember, uh, in listening all week and as we go forward, I want you to be, be um, um, what's the word? Be, I want you to be cognizant of the words that I'm sharing, not just to that person who violates your boundaries, but remember to ourselves, because sometimes I don't know about y'all. If you'll be, te- you tell, you told the truth the other day, don't leave me out here by myself. Sometimes I can be the perpetrator. Sometimes I can be the boundary buster. Come on, somebody. I can be the one that steps over that line that somebody has created. So I don't want you to just listen listen with victim ears. I want you to listen with perpetrator ears too, all right? So when somebody oversteps your boundaries, you can recognize it by the feeling of discomfort that you get. They make you feel uncomfortable. They cause you to feel uncomfortable with their disrespectful, intimidating, pushy, and nosy behavior. Anybody ever felt that before? Watch this. People who overstep boundaries, they don't consider your needs or your feelings. They don't consider your needs or your feelings. Let's see what Pastor Jeff is saying. Your definition of how God set borders and boundaries so that natural order is maintained is so important. We often listen for what people say, but we bypass the lessons of God who created all. Great message. That I was just recanting what Pastor Richard Miller shared on yesterday. Yeah, that was very um, a very profound lesson. And it, it was simple but profound. Yeah. So let's see. Let's keep going. Um, people who overstep boundaries, uh, they don't care about your needs or your feelings. People overstep boundaries for many reasons. But here's the main reason. Selfishness. Somebody type that selfishness is often the root. People overstep boundaries because they are selfish. And when it's paired with a lack of empathy, a person does not consider how their behavior affects other people. I wish I had a witness in here. I sure wish I had a witness. Don't leave me out here by myself. Here's another thing. They need something from you. And they don't worry about whether you have time and or the desire to do that or not. I'm talking about people who overstep. I'm talking about somebody type this boundary busters. I know that was a movie called Ghostbusters, but I just created another buster. Come on, boundary busters. They need something from you and they don't worry about, they don't care about whether you got time to do it, whether you want to do it, whether you can do it. All they're concerned about is what they want. Come on now. Boundary busters. Yes, yes, yes. Habitual line steppers. I saw that. It it went so fast. But that's real. People do this habitually. All right? Here's another thing. You can clearly see it in situations when the other person ignores your opinions or ignore your emotional state and keeps push, pushing you to do what they want you to do. They, they dismiss your opinions. We talked about that the other day, that um, intellectual boundary that's overstepped or, or, or they overstep the emotional boundary. Pastor Nate talked about how people are always trying to tell you how you should feel in certain situations. No. So they always ignore that. They dismiss that and they keep on pushing you to do what they want you to do. All right. And that's just not the way it's it's supposed to be. Let me see what y'all are saying. Y'all, you know, I'm trying to work both, both and it, you know. Um, yeah. It's, it's all about them. It's all about them. Pa- Minister Dennis says sometimes people overstep boundaries intending to help thinking that they're helping you and will not relent because they are intent on fulfilling their purpose. All right. Roulette says you have gone too far. Stop. And I think the thing is a lot of times when we are boundary busters, we don't even know when we've gone too far. We don't know. People dismiss your opinions, your emotions, and they 
push you to do what they want you to do. Pastor Damien says, the thing is, people never take into consideration how much you may have going on. They don't. They never check your emotional stability because at the end of the day, they don't really care. All they know is what they want. Uh, uh, good word, Minister Dennis. David uh, Max says, manipulative personalities. Pretty much. Boundary busters. Only want access to your quality, your ability, only to take away from you, but no healthy reciprocity. No healthy, they don't get, they don't intend on giving back. It's just give me, give me, give me. I want it and I want it now. They don't care. All right. Let's keep pushing. Um, so let's talk today about what do you do? when someone oversteps your boundaries? What do you do when somebody oversteps your boundaries? All right? The first thing I wanna say is wake up. Somebody say that, type it, wake up. What do you mean by that, Pastor Sheree? Here's, here's what I mean. You need to make sure you are super clear on what your boundaries are before you go into a situation. So wake up and make sure you understand. Wake up and make sure you're conscious and cognitive of what your boundaries are before entering into a situation. I said it this week, you can't wait till a situation happens and then start trying to create boundaries. And the, no, the boundaries already gotta be created. Boundaries have already have to be established so that you will know when the boundary buster has arrived, right? So you got to make sure that you are super, super duper clear on what your boundaries are before you go into a situation. So take some time to figure out what your limits really, what, what are your limits? What, what is it that you will and will not participate in? What is it that you will or will not tolerate? How, how many of you have ever even given consideration to that? You need to know. Vanessa says you have to put on your big girl panties and your big boy pants and let people know your boundaries. But before letting people know, I need you to wake up and make sure you know. Right? Because ain't nothing worse than trying to stand your ground and you don't know what you're talking about. Well, uh, I, I really, I ain't that comfortable with this. I, I don't really like, no, tell this, I'm not doing that. Because all a, a boundary buster needs is to see that you don't really, you're not clear on what you're talking about. And guess what? They're going to trample right on over you and step right on across the line. All right? So you got to wake up and make sure you know. If you let a person slide once, they'll think that they can ice skate anytime they want to. And they can because you didn't you didn't you didn't fortify your boundary. Remember, Pastor Richard talked about that fortifying the line, plumbing the line. Your boundaries ain't straight. Your boundary line move every day. It's, it's right here today, but then you might move it back because you ain't sure. No, wake up. Somebody say wake up and make sure you are clear first and foremost on what your boundaries are. After you wake up, then you need to what? speak up now is when we're going to tell them what our boundaries are after you wake up and you have determined what i will and will not do what i will and will not participate in what i will and will not tolerate now i'm clear on my boundary the line is straight the line is fortified come on somebody now it's time to speak up. Here it is. Here's what I mean by that. You must clearly and firmly, and let me add respectfully, communicate your boundaries. Clearly and firmly communicate your boundaries. Because here's the thing. Maybe they're not even realizing what they're doing. So you need to voice your boundaries openly and firmly. I think Minister Dennis said it just a minute ago. Sometimes people do it in the name of helping. But 
they don't know that that's not your, you know, you ain't willing to do this and you're not going to, because you never established and you never said what your boundaries are. So sometimes people don't, they don't realize what they're doing. All right. So the onus is on you, ma'ams and sirs, to share and, and state very clearly in a concise manner and in a firm manner what your boundaries are. Here it is. This is necessary because boundary busters know what they want and they are used to getting it. Do you hear me? People who overstep boundaries all the time, they know what they want and they're used to getting what they want. So you can come in there, jelly back if you want to. Guess what's going to happen? They're going to push you out the way and scribble over your line and get what they want. Let's see what y'all are saying. Protect your peace. Speak up. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dewey. Also reestablish your boundaries as needed. All right. So, so listen. So here, here it is. After you wake up and determine for yourself what, what it is that my boundaries are, because I can't talk about what I don't know about. All right. Here's the thing. Be firm and say, no, that's not going to work for me. But this is what I can do. It's as simple as that. It don't be like, oh, I don't really, oh, I don't really want to do it. No, I'm not going to do it. That's not going to work for me. However, here's what I'm able to do. Here's what I'm willing to do. That's how you do that, y'all. Remember, boundaries are about what you are going to do, not about what somebody else is going to do. I need you to get that. Stop creating boundaries talking about what they ain't going to do. No, this is what I'm not going to do. This is what I'm not going to allow. My boundaries are about what I'm not going to participate in. My boundaries are about what I'm not going to allow to happen. Okay? Because if you, here, you here's the thing. You, you have to make sure that you understand boundaries are about me, not about them, because... When we try to dictate somebody else's behavior, that, that board is on control and it typically doesn't go well. And we don't want to be guilty of trying to control somebody else because that then that then that goes over to manipulation and all the, those things. So are there any, any questions, comments, concerns so far? Let's see what you're saying. Wake up and speak up. You are in charge of your own peace and joy. I just love all, who your facial expressions and love says keeping it real. I listen. It's a part of who I am. <laughs> uh, people need to, people know how to get their needs met by any means necessary. Correct. They, they are used to getting what they want. They know what they want. People who overstep, they already know, and they coming to get it. And the thing is, they're used to getting it. And so it's going to take somebody being firm and clear that's going to make them stand down. Otherwise, here they come. Pastor Damon says Jesus had boundaries. God told Moses what the boundaries were. Yes, Pastor Richard did a whole lesson on that yesterday. Phenomenal. Y'all need to go back and watch it if you missed it. Um, My space, my peace, my place are important. Oh, that's good. My space, my peace, and my place are important to me. I like that. I like it. Uh, Hortensia, that is so true. We must express what is on our chest in love. We must be firm and precise about our expectation. Peace is a valuable and crucial asset in life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Stop letting people be the pilot in your life. Jackie. Oh, that's good. Stop letting people be the pilot in your life. Without boundaries, you can't keep the garbage out, but more so, you cannot keep your peace and peace, joy, and love in. That's good. Um, it was never in your design of being human to dehumanize yourself by allowing others to treat you as a doormat. Come on. What's that? What is that saying? Y'all, I'm not crying. I promise. My allergies on fleek right now. Um, you don't have to set yourself on fire to keep somebody else warm. We ain't doing it. Show sure ain't. Boundaries. Come on now. 
Uh, Malika says, I'm in a season where I'm speaking up and sticking to my boundaries, using the word no more often. I told the ladies in the ladies room, it's okay to say no. So I told them, practice different ways of saying it. No. Nope. Mm -mm. And you just shake your head. Just practice. Not going to be able to do it. All right, so just practice different ways. It's really okay. And you can do it without feeling guilty. You can do it without going on a guilt trip. David Mack says, knowing the difference between boundaries and walls. Boundaries are healthy and come with good communication and being aware of our needs, but being self-centered. All right? Um, let's, let's move. Let's keep pushing. Let's keep pushing. So I told you to wake up. That means... Figure out what your boundaries are. Be clear on what your boundaries are. Before you can communicate to someone else, you need to make sure you know. Because if you go in not knowing, boundary busters are going to know that you don't know. And so they will, they will create order for your life, but it's going to benefit them. Then I told you to speak up. You must clearly and firmly, respectfully communicate your boundaries to other people. OK. Um, and remember, boundaries are for you. It's not about them. It's for you. What I will not allow, what I will not participate in, what I will participate in, what I will tolerate, what I will not tolerate. All right. What, what conversations I'll engage in, which ones I won't. It's about me. OK, so here's the last one. Stand up. Stand up. Now, here's what I'm talking about right here. At some point, you may have to stand up and go. Did you see the scripture in Titus chapter 3, verse 10? If I done told you and you keep overstepping, then guess what? I got to stand up and step. I, sometimes you have to stand up and go. You may have to stop the interaction. You may have to leave the situation. You may have to hang up the phone. You remember Pastor Nate and I had that conversation. I, yes, I will hang up after I have told you. Uh, you, may, you may have to not respond to that text or respond to that email right away or at all. Do what's best for you in the moment. I hope I'm making myself clear. Sometimes you got to stand up and step. Sometimes you got to stand up and go. Remove yourself. Stop the interaction with said person. Stop it. Here it is. You need to stand up and take care of yourself. Oftentimes, that means removing yourself, especially if you've already done the first two points, especially if you've already done the wake up and you've already done the speak up. Now, I done told you. Okay. So sometimes you have to do what's necessary for your peace. Is that all right? Okay. Here's the thing. I want to I want to point this out too. We can learn from people who overstep boundaries. You can learn from anybody. Did anybody ever tell you that? You can learn from anybody. You can learn from a fool, if nothing else, but how to not do what they did. But here's some things I point, I want to point out that you can learn from people who overstep boundaries. Here's some things you can learn from boundary busters. They have no problem verbalizing exactly what they want. Pause. Why are we scared to announce our boundaries? Why are we scared to tell people what we will and will not do? They don't have a problem with it. So that's one lesson you can learn. Now, of course, you, you do it. You don't have to be mean or rude about it. Uh, and you don't have to be, what's the word? Never mind. You, you, you get the picture. There is a way. They don't mind doing it. Learn the lesson. They don't have a problem verbalizing. Neither should you. And they tend to be firm and unapologetic about what they want. What's wrong with you? Why are you jellybacking? Why are you scared? Why are you wishy-washy? Why are your boundary line always moving? Why is your boundary line crooked? 
Who moved your line back? Come on. Be unapologetic and be firm about what you want. They'll say, well, I need you to do this. And when you say, well, I'm not, I can't do that. I'm not going to do that. Here's what I will do. Right? Let's see what y'all are saying. So, so if after they tell you what they want, what they want from you, and you say, I'm not, I'm not able to do that. I can't do that. I'm not going to do that. And then if they keep on trying to negotiate, you just step, stand up and go. Because I'm not going to keep negotiating with you. I've told you what I what I'm not going to do, what I will do. And if what I will do does not satisfy your need in this moment, then perhaps you need to seek it from somewhere else. Y'all, we got to have boundaries. You're not going to just keep showing up in my house at will when you get ready. In the name of I'm just checking on you. No, there's a phone. There's this thing called a telephone. And if you don't want to talk to me, you don't even have to call me. You can text me and ask me if I'm available. Because, see, sometimes people have ulterior motives. And that's just one, one instance. Um, we can simply tell people this. We can simply tell people I can do this, but I can't do that. Just that simple, David. I'm not going to do that, but here's what I can do. And if it, what I can do doesn't work, then I guess you probably need to find somebody else. Stand up for thyself. Come on now. Pastor Richard says, young folks call it matching energy. You bold on busting boundaries, I'm going to be bold in fortifying mine. And that's the lesson you learn. They're, they're, not, they're unapologetic about it. So why are we so timid? And why, why do they always get to take us on guilt trips? Make it make sense. Um, when I say no, it doesn't mean next opportunity. And oh, it means not obtainable. That your no be no. You should show up if you want to, but you're not getting in my house. You can show up if you want to, but you're not getting in my house. True. And don't feel bad about it. And I'm not going nowhere to hide. I'm looking right at you at this. I'm not coming. To open the door. Once you stand up, you will see that they are scary individuals themselves. Put them in their place one good time. You'll see ain't no bite to the bark. Please set yourself free. Pastor Jeff, once you set the standard, don't compromise. That's it. And that's what that's what we keep doing. We keep letting them negotiate and causing us to overstep our own boundary, causing us to erase our boundary, causing us to compromise. If that's what I don't want to do, then I don't want to do that. That doesn't work for my life right now. That disturbs my peace right now. People will keep pushing you to see if you mean what you say. They are aggressive. They are used to getting what they want. And it is not until you stand your ground, 10 toes down, I'm not going to be able to do that. Then they'll back off. All right? Um... Dennis, I had people come to my door, never knock or ring, just leave a note. All right? Jazzy, I've had to, to learn how to disengage in my latter years of life. If I only knew this earlier on, it would have saved me a lot of headache. Listen, you are not alone. But listen, uh, learning now is better than never learning. So you got it? Run with it. Um, a gentleman approached me, asked if I was married. My response to him was, but you are. So go home to her. What gives him the nerve? Fool is not on my forehead. Step, sir. Good for you. Because I know a lot of women who would engage the conversation. I'm just saying. Um, Kim says, I'm so thankful for my daddy because as mean as he was, he instilled in me this voice and this attitude. Reverend Clark was just like Mr. Clark from Lean on Me. I get it from my daddy. Thank you, Rev. All right. Um, they will keep pushing you, but you just got to show them what you mean and what you say. And all the time, y'all, we don't have to be rude. It's a simple, no, I can't do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. Here's what I can do. Or here's what I'm willing to do. But, and then, so if that doesn't, if that don't meet your need, then I'm sorry. I'm not the chick for this one. You need to find somebody else, I guess. Um, let's see. 
uh, audacity is never in short supply for some married folks. Child, audacity is all married, single. It, all of them got a little crazy in them. All right, let's keep pushing. Let's keep pushing. Now, that's on that side of the line. Now, let me bring it to this side when you are the boundary buster. Because now, again, as I stated earlier, when I asked this question Tuesday, some of you raised your hand that you, much like myself, can be an overstepper, a boundary buster. So when you find yourself in that position, not the victim, but now I'm the perpetrator, let's talk about how to apologize. Y'all want to talk about that? How to apologize for overstepping boundaries. Y'all ready or no? Let's talk. The first thing you need to do, discuss what happened. Discuss what happened. When somebody brings it to your attention that you have overstepped your boundaries, ma'am, ma'am, or mama, mama, daddy, you, you, you overstepping your boundaries now. Here's the thing. Let's discuss what happened. Make sure it's clear for both parties what happened and why it happened. Okay? And so if you are the one who, if you're the, let, let me, let me turn, turn it both ways. If you're the person who was violated or your boundary was overstepped, you got to be willing to listen. When somebody comes to you to apologize, I, already, I don't want to talk about it. That You childish. You, you, so you want to be mad. I don't like them kind of people. Those kind of people get on my nerves. I don't, you come to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Okay, so now you're being unfair to me because you just complained that I overstepped. But now I'm coming to talk to you to find out what happened from your perspective and then let me tell you why, perhaps, I did or said what I said or did. Does that make sense, y'all? Let's make it clear. All right, then the next thing is communicate why you said what you said. Perpetrator, uh, boundary buster, tell them. what Because everything, this is all about clarity. The Bible says wisdom is, 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 is good. It's, it's the key thing, but it's a principal thing. But in all you're getting... Get an understanding. And so that's what you come to them to do is get understanding. Communicate why you said what you said or why you did what you did. All right. Then ask how your actions affected them. And I know some of y'all probably got too much pride to do any of this, but I'm just trying to help you be better. All right. After you ask how what you said affected them or or how it, what you did made them feel, then accept their feelings. Do not be dismissive. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't get mad. I just told you, you it made me mad. I, I just told you it put me in a, a certain place. No, it didn't. You don't get to say that. You don't get to tell somebody else how they feel. Accept their feelings and promise not to overstep their boundaries again. What they say in the old church, y'all don't like this kind of teaching. Y'all don't like this. But it's the truth anyhow. All right? So, so discuss what happened. Go to them to get clarity and to, to kind of let them know why you said, I think that's only fair. Even though you still gonna, you might be wrong, but if at least if they have an understanding of where you were coming from when you said it. Now, don't go lying. Don't go over there making up no mess. Be truthful. So after we discuss what happened, here, here's the next thing. Define new boundaries. What do you mean? Define new boundaries. Here it is. If the boundaries were not established before, let's, let's do it now. This might even require defining new boundaries. Talk about what's acceptable behavior from both of you and then under the other person's request. If they say, I don't like you just showing up in my house without calling. Then you need to promise them that the next time you come, before you come, you're going to call. And that's not the only thing. That's just the, 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 the one that, I could, that comes to mind that's more practical. Th does that make sense? Find out what the boundary is. Or if there is no boundary, maybe y'all need to create boundaries. 
And so if they say, I would, I would like for you to do this before you do this, or I would like when you don't do this, I'm not going to be able to do this. I can't, I can't, um, I don't like when people show up in my house because I may be resting or I, I may not feel like being bothered. So I would appreciate it if before you came, you would let me know so that I can tell you yes or no. All right. And then honor their request. The last one, and I'm going to hurry up because we're running out of time. Move forward. All right. After you discuss what happened, define new boundaries. The next thing you need to do is move forward. Here it is. And I'm done. Allow the relationship to move forward in a new way. We're not going to be doing the same old stuff in a new way. Well, well, what if my ex keep coming, you know, because we got kids, he think he can just show up and he think he can just call and do this and, and, and uh, in a new way, set the boundaries, move in a new way and communicate what that new way will look like from your end. Here's what I'm not going to do anymore. I apologize. You don't have to worry about me doing that to you anymore. Make it clear that you will respect their boundaries and will do better next time. Simple enough? Is that simple enough? Even when people tell me they don't care if I pop up, I still text or call. I think it's common courtesy. It's just common sense. Renee says, because I always think in terms of, I don't want nobody doing it to me. John Ty said, respect their feelings. We all have feelings, but we all express our feelings in a different way. So again, I got to say, conversation rules the nation. If you would just have a conversation. All right. Um, what is this one? Show she teaching so good. I feel like sending a text and saying, bring me on camera. I want to, <laughs> got a good teaching preaching makes you want to teach preach. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Pastor Richard. Thank you so much. Uh, Katina says our pride gets in the way of doing these things in the right manner. So a lot of times we ain't going to apologize because of a pride issue, but I'm just sharing this with you so that you can be right. Because if you continue to be a busybody in other people's affairs, the Bible says, I just read it to you, that you're not in, living a life, a, a God-honoring life. All right? If you're going to suffer, he said, don't let it be because you're a busybody. So when you, when you realize that you are overstepping, that you are the perpetrator, there the onus is on you to make it right. All right? Um, that's right. Goes both ways. Boundaries go both ways. There are two sides to that line. Come on, somebody. If you got a line, it's a side over here and it's a side over here. So the rules go both ways. Everybody has a, a part to play. One side, I have a, a part to play in, in communicating firmly and clearly what the boundary is. And then on this other side, if I overstepped it, then I have the responsibility to come and discuss and, and find out what, what I can do to, to be better, to get clarity on the boundary, and to make the promise that I won't do it again. All right? Melissa said everybody want to be right, though. Unfortunately, everybody can't if it's a conflict. All right? So listen, y'all, that's all I have today. Um, just want to make sure we, we're operating correctly when it comes to boundaries and overstepping because overstepping happens we cannot act like it doesn't it happens so you need to know how to handle that what to do when it happens to you and then what to do when you do it to somebody else uh and today of course today is friday you know that means we are sewing today um i see some have gone but listen don't don't be the one that that just takes 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 um I want you to sow today. I want you to sow today. Be intentional. Um, today, you know, Fridays, we sow a seed. We ask that you try to sow no less than $20. But again, if you don't have 20, do what you can. Uh, you don't want to be guilty of just coming in and eating up all this good food and all this good nourishment and dipping out on us. That's likened to you going to a restaurant, eating all you can, all you can eat, and then running out on the bill. 
Guess what happens? You're probably going to go to jail. Somebody going to call the police. You don't want to be a criminal in the spirit. Come on, somebody. Uh, I need you to sew today. So today, at least $20 if you can. Our cash tag is, and listen, y'all, we are we are working on getting our uh, bank account established so that you can have other ways. There's the, you know, Zelle and Venmo and writing checks and all that. So give us a minute. Be patient with us. Um, we, we really, because God is really blowing our minds with this platform. And so we're having to move from just this box that we're in uh, to go ahead and establish some things business-wise. But right now, we still have Cash App only. So our cash tag is the faith, dollar sign, the faith room one. So today, and watch the return on the investment. Nobody sows a seed and nothing comes up unless you're not cultivating. Come on now. Don't be bound. This is good ground. Sow your seed today. $20 uh, if you don't have $20, then so what you can. This is something we do every Friday, every Friday. Some of you may sow throughout the week, and that's wonderful. We appreciate it, but we have set aside Fridays for our day to sow. All right, um, so do that, ma'ams and sirs. Uh, Pastor Jeff, thank you for an excellent word on this subject. A changed behavior is the best apology someone can give. Great weekend. Same to you, sir. Yeah, let's 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 handle up and do better. Do better. Um, thank you so much, Pastor Cherie. This was great. You handled this by yourself. Ten toes now. Hey, hey. Thank you. Y'all help me though. Thank you so much. God be praised. Have an amazing day. Don't forget to smile. God is amazing. Thank you for reminding us. Um. All right, y'all. So listen, go ahead and do what you said you're going to do this weekend. Get your rest, hang out, have fun with your family, your friends, and uh, let's come back. Y'all remember to pray for Pastor Nate. He is uh, here in my city, uh, but he's not at my church. Um, he's at, I think, I think there are some churches that have come together, but it's for their leaders. So I won't be able to attend, but um, pray that he has a successful time um, in ministry, um, and that those people are blessed and made all the better. Um, and, and we just want to lift him up as, again, as not only just a, not only as a senior pastor at greater life, not only as the host and visionary for the faith room platform, but God has given him the, the, the blessed gift of penmanship, being a writer, a scribe, an author. And so we want God to bless him in that capacity as well. It's a wonderful thing when you're not just one dimensional, uh, but there are many facets to a person. And so we thank God for the person of Pastor Nathaniel Stewart. Amen. So don't forget to pray. Father, we thank you now for all that your hand has provided. We thank you, God, for every person in this room. We thank you for your word. God, we thank you for the practicality of it. Show us what we need to do, God, so that we can bring you glory. Father, I, I come against um, um, pride that doesn't bring you glory, that will keep us from doing what is necessary to make things right, to restore relationships and, and God to just represent you in the best way possible. We thank you for every person in this room and we lift up every person's day to you and we say, have your way in us and through us. Use us as only you can. God, I pray for Pastor Nate as he is on assignment uh, that you would give him what he needs, give him the words to say. I thank you that you're already preparing the hearts and the ears of the people who will be in his presence so that they can get what they need and be better because of being in his presence. We love you and we honor you. I plead the blood of Jesus over us all. Keep us safe, Lord God, and bring us back to this place at the appointed time. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen and thank God. All right, y'all, go out and have an amazing day. Do y'all see this tear running down my face? My eyes are just crying. My Listen. Allergies on fleek, but guess what? Can't be stopped. Can't stop, won't stop, ain't. Cannot, gonna still talk. Come on, somebody. Go out and have an amazing weekend and make sure your weekend has an amazing you. Go to somebody's church on Sunday and let's talk about it when we get back Monday. I love y'all and I mean it. Bye now.